I bring in things on mortgage because Keelan and I are in the mortgage arena and that is our uh, expertise. Sometimes I talk about what's happening in our, our market, but I, today I t- thought I'd bring in a, a little bit about what's about mortgages because I know there's a lot of media out there and different uh, places, not us because we're in the industry, that talk about how difficult it is to secure a mortgage, which really isn't true. So I wanted to talk about that because we are seeing a little slope in the market and we're going to talk about that with one of our uh, real estate experts here today. Uh, and so it might be a good time if you're thinking of being a homeowner for my first or ho- first time home buyers out there listening, or maybe you might have tried to get approved before and thought it was a little bit challenging and want to come back and take a look at it. So I thought I'd break it down a little bit uh, for you. The supply of money for first time home buyers is not tight. And that so you're we're always going to be lacking something. We're going to be lacking buyers or we're going to be lacking sellers. Right now we still are lacking sellers or we're going to be lacking money, meaning that the interest rates are too high, not an issue, or that the banks are not lending, not an issue. So in this market, the lack that we're seeing is the sellers or the inventory, even though things have picked up a little bit, it's still without a doubt a seller's market. So there's no definite there's no shortage of money. So the first thing that you may see that you need to come in with a 20% down payment. Well, you don't. You can actually buy a home with zero down for all of our veteran listeners. It's an amazing way to get into a home. Uh, USDA is a great uh, way to get into a home as well as if you're buying in a rural area. And then also there's down payment assistant programs. And you do not have to be a first-time home buyer to qualify for a zero down down payment assistant program. There are income restrictions, so you can't make too much money to qualify for the program. But uh, if you do make too much money, that's probably not bad news because it's better to make more money. And you can come in with still a low down payment as low as a three and a half percent down payment and even conventional has a three percent down payment uh, option now now also you may think may be thinking that if you don't have a 20 percent down that you have to pay mortgage insurance or private mortgage insurance known as PMI that is not accurate information either because you can actually do a lender paid where the lender is going to pay the mortgage insurance for you higher interest rate. That's how the lender pays for it. Or my favorite is you do a buyout or what's known as a single premium. So you pay an upfront fee, which by the way, can be financed into your loan to where you completely eliminate that monthly mortgage insurance or that monthly PMI. So a really, really great option on conventional buyers. Now, employment's another area that you may have heard that you need two years employed at your your job, which is not true. You don't have to have two years at your same employer. You just need to have a two-year work history. And depending on what type of loan that you're going with, if you're coming out of school and you went to school for that type of employment job job that you've taken, uh, that can count most of the time in that two-year history. Now, if you have a gap of employment over the last two years, as long as it doesn't go over six months, you're going to be okay. It's at six months or anything more. That's where it can sometimes uh, be a challenge. You just want to check with uh, your lender, mortgage expert, which Keelan and I can assist you with that uh, to find out if you can get an exception on that. Income. So first of all, there are uh, plenty of options out there now where you can do a stated income loan. Now, we're not back into the days to where uh, no job, no loan, breathe on a mirror, get a loan. Um, That's not what's what the banks are lending, but they are allowing you to state your income. And then it's verified based on bank statements. So just showing that you actually have the amount that you're stated coming into your bank on a regular basis. And then that way you can avoid some of the issues that you might have if you're self-employed and in, uh, lenders are looking at your net income instead of your what you're actually grossing. That, that's where stated income can really come in handy. Now, on also on income or coming up with a debt-to-income ratio, you may have heard a 32 or a 36 or a 38 percent debt to income ratio but the reality is is you can easily go to easily go to a 45 percent debt to income ratio on any loan some loans will actually allow you to go to 50 or even higher percent debt to income ratio so how this is based is you take your monthly gross income gross before you pay taxes not your actual take home unless you're self-employed and you multiply that by the maximum debt to income ratio so let's just say you make four thousand forty eight thousand dollars a year you just take it and multiply it by 48 percent debt to income ratio which will leave a mortgage payment you could approve for at 1800 minus any debt that you're paying on a monthly basis where you have obligations that will show up on your credit report Uh, so most of the time you're going to approve for more than what you may even feel comfortable making on a monthly basis. So uh, last area that can be some confusion is credit. 
you do not have to have perfect credit to get a mortgage and you can have challenging credit to get a mortgage. If you've got a credit score of 560, there are options available for you through FHA financing. 620 will get you into VA, USDA, conventional financing, even if you're doing a low down payment option. So there's a lot of options out there and I thought it would be helpful being that we see some opportunity for people that don't own a home now to get back into the market, get excited about the fact that there's a little bit more inventory that's come on, which means it's not so crazy out there. And that's my money chat for you today. Coming up next in the money hour, financial joy, know the data behind your dreams. Marcel Allen of Dreamosity, right here at 1150 AM KKNW after the short break.